Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Our Gospel reading today is taken from the beginning of chapter 6 of Mark. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things? they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given him? What are these remarkable miracles he's performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honour, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few people who were ill and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belt. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons, and anointed with oil many people who were ill, and healed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, Father, as we reflect on your words today, help us to allow them into our hearts to change our lives. Amen. I wonder what the disciples were thinking when they heard Jesus telling them that they were to go off in pairs to the areas around. Did their thoughts go back to their time in Nazareth? where people refused to recognise Jesus as someone special. The people there thought they knew Jesus and so were not willing to recognise that he was more than just the carpenter's son. We're told that this meant Jesus was unable to do any miracles there. It does amuse me that verse. He could not do any miracles there, except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. As if healing the sick was not miraculous. Or did their thoughts go back further than Nazareth? Back to Jesus healing the woman that touched his cloak. And then following that up with raising a dead girl. Or even before that with the healing of the demon-possessed man and the pigs drowning themselves? Or did they start panicking because they were being asked to leave the large, comfortable group they were in and go out and actually do something without the other eleven to hide behind? Was there a mad scrambling to try and be the one that went around with Peter or James? 
And then there were the conditions that Jesus laid on them for while they were out. Three instructions. Number one. Take nothing with you except for a staff. No bread, bag or money. And that meant that they'd have no way of feeding themselves. A second tunic, which was also forbidden, would have been used as an extra blanket if they had to sleep outside. So no extra tunic would mean that they'd have been very uncomfortable if they didn't find lodging. So in following these instructions, the disciples would have to rely on being able to find people that would feed them and provide them with shelter. It would require them to trust God to look after them instead of being self-sufficient. The second instruction is when you enter a house stay there until you leave that town. This meant that they were not to try and upgrade their lodging while they were in a town. It's reasonable to suppose that the first accommodation offered when they arrived in a community would not have been the best available, possibly a room in a public house or inn. However, after they'd been there a few days and healed people, they may have been offered a room in someone's house as a thank you. With the instruction to stay in one place, they avoided the appearance of preaching and healing for gain. It would have also have avoided them having to spend time moving about and investigating other lodging options when they were supposed to be spending their time preaching and healing. And instruction three, if they will not welcome you or listen to you, then shake the dust off your feet when you leave. Now this refers to a teaching of the rabbis that taught that when someone entered Israel from a Gentile area, they were to shake every grain of unclean dust from themselves before entering the clean land of Israel. In doing this, they were showing the absolute separation of clean and unclean. The disciples were instructed that if a community refused to open their homes, ears and hearts, then they were to act as though it was a Gentile place. It was a physical act indicating or implying that it was a place that was excluded from the blessings of God. We never actually find out all that much about the disciples. But we can see here that Jesus is calling them to step out and to trust God. As I said at the beginning, I wonder what they thought. I also wonder how they encouraged each other. As Christians, we often use Bible verses or passages to encourage one another. But as I was looking through a few lists of encouraging Bible verses on the internet, I realised that over half of the lists came from the New Testament. As such, they wouldn't have been available to the disciples. So verses such as, If God is for us, who can be against us? And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. They both come from Romans. From today's first reading, we have, my grace is sufficient for you. My power is made perfect in weakness. 
All three of those verses are written by Paul. So they weren't available to the disciples. That's not to say that they would have been without spiritual encouragement. One that helped me when I was struggling in my re readership training is from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. That's from Isaiah. And then the whole of Psalm 23. They're all Old Testament verses. Scripture verses that the disciples would have known and would have been able to call upon as encouragement. So the disciples are sent out they're given their instructions and they went. I actually find the last couple of verses of our gospel reading to be encouraging in their own right. The disciples have gone out after Jesus has experienced rejection. They're given instructions about how they're to handle rejection if it comes to them. But then we're told they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Despite having been prepared for rejection, we're told that they actually had a successful time. So. Now for the bit that we generally don't like to hear as much. God has not stopped calling his people to go and proclaim his message to the world around us. Many of us would prefer to stay where we are. Part of a larger group, being taught by someone we can relate to and staying safe. But that's not the way it works. If we all stay in our small groups, how are we going to introduce anyone else to our loving Saviour? If we refuse to step out and proclaim the Gospel message, then how are others supposed to hear? So I have to say now, be prepared that God could call you. He could call you to step out in faith to a different area of the country or even to a different country. Equally, he could call you to acknowledge your faith to your friends at the coffee morning you already attend. But whatever he calls you to, you need to make a decision about whether you will obey. You may feel that you are unsuitable for what he calls you to. You don't have the skills you need. But that's when we need to remember particularly the end of our first reading. Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When we step out in faith, relying on God, he will step up and he will give us what we need to fulfil what he's called us to. So let's be prepared for God to call. Let's be open to obeying. 
and let's see what God will do through us. Amen.